this video, we're going to learn how to prepare our finished panels for cutting by arranging them onto a specified length of fabric. This is called nesting. It's very simple to do, and it helps us produce our panels in the most efficient way possible. Before nesting our panels, we want to make sure that we've added a warp line during the stamping process. The warp line is this vertical line here, indicating the direction of the warp of the fabric. Alternatively, we can orient the panel so that their warp direction is horizontal. Also, all panels must be nested before using the output tool, because in-panel cannot handle panels after output, since they've been altered to suit the cutter system in use. There are two ways of nesting panels. The first and most common method is called full sheet nesting. On the in-panel toolbar, let's go to the options under the Arrange Panels tool. Here we'll select the option to nest panels. Then under nest sheet, we'll select the specified dimensions. Enter the dimensions of the sheet of fabric you'll be using to produce your panels. For this example, we'll specify a width of 40 inches and a length of 200 inches. We'll also specify a large number of sheets, say 99. The nesting program will use as many of these sheets as it needs. Under Nest Panel Placement, we'll choose a warp angle limit of 10 degrees. This means that the panels can be rotated by plus or minus 10 degrees from the warp line. We'll also specify a minimum panel spacing of 0. Reasonable performance will be obtained with a linear resolution of approximately 1% of the table width an angular resolution of approximately 20% of the warp angle limit, that would be 2 in this case, and an optimization level of 100, with a linear resolution of much less than 1% or an angular resolution of much more than 20%, the program will take much longer to nest the panels. Now click OK. Before we nest our panels, we'll first make a copy of them, and put it right over here, which we'll need to come back to later. And now we'll select all of our panels and run the tool. Because we have not purchased a full nesting license, this error message will come up. We can just ignore it for this demonstration, but before doing actual nesting, a license will need to be purchased. You can purchase a license for this feature by contacting Meliar Design. The sheets of fabric, along with the nested panels, are drawn out. A report on the nest is sent to the in-panel text window, which is found right here. Let's quickly make a couple more copies of the set of panels, and then we're going to go back to the nesting options and find out what happens if we alter a few things. If, for instance, we were to specify only one sheet, which is not enough for all of these panels, then we would get the following result when we run the tool. Here's that same error message coming up again. And now we can look at the nesting progress right here above the in-panel toolbar. The panels that are used in the nest will be identified in the original set of panels. They're marked in red, whereas the panels that did not fit on the sheet are still in black. If, on the other hand, we were to specify a sheet that's longer than the cutting table, we'll get a rolling nest. Let's try that. Let's move these panels a little further off. And then let's run the tool on this set of panels here with this much longer sheet of fabric. The nest is running up here, and you can watch the progress. So there's our rolling nest. This nests more tightly, but depends on the table indexing during sheet movement for accurate cutting. Another way to nest panels is by partial nesting, which allows us to specify the sheet of fabric by drawing it on the screen as a closed polyline. This is especially useful if we have an irregularly shaped piece of fabric left over from another project that we want to use. To do this, we'll go into the nesting options again, 
And we'll click on Use Closed Polyline in Drawing. Click OK. Now select the panels and the polyline and run the tool. Still nesting. And here, once again, we have the nested panels marked in red in the original set. Note, however, that with partial nesting, we can only nest one sheet at a time. When nesting, any small unused spaces can also be filled with stock pieces. Here we have a sheet of fabric with only one panel in it, left over from our first nesting example, along with a reinforcement patch. We can duplicate this reinforcement patch in end panel using the Make Panel Copy option under the Modify a Panel tool. If we go into the options under this tool, we can specify how many copies we want to make. Let's say 20. Now we'll select the patch and make the copies. And then we'll select the stock pieces. And we'll also select the unused fabric space marked off by this magenta polyline. And we'll run the nesting tool. The program will fit as many pieces as possible with the designated warp limit into the prescribed area. Because we don't care what the warp angle is for stock pieces, we could have chosen a warp limit of 90 degrees, which would make for the best fit possible. However, this will also slow the tool down significantly. We're now finished with our exercise, and we've learned how to nest panels using full sheet nesting and partial nesting.